A keen interest in Viking culture and Norse mythology remains firmly planted in today's pop culture, with blockbuster movies such as Thor and the hit TV show Vikings. A ridiculously good-looking cast, lots of violence and sexual themes might help explain the rabid interest. However, several recent findings have yielded not only a treasure trove of artifacts, but provided startling new insights about the people best known for pillage and plunder. Inhabitants of the Viking Age, roughly 800 AD to 1100, left behind only scant written records. Some stone and wood-carved runes have managed to survive, but detailed stories called the sagas are not considered reliable accounts, penned mostly by victims of brutal raids centuries after the fact. Fortunately, new scientific analysis, radar scans, and documentation techniques are shedding new light on old mysteries. Grave Goods The Vikings held a strong belief in the afterlife and conducted elaborate funerals, giving the dead a proper send-off for their journey to the other side. The sites included various materials known as grave goods and consisted of items ranging from the mundane to the exquisite. As for the people honored in these tombs, a re-examination of bone samples is helping to determine a person's wealth, social standing, and even what they probably ate for breakfast. While most Norse people were either buried or cremated in simple graves, large ships served as coffins for the remains of the highly privileged. The best preserved excavations have produced an assortment of personal effects, such as swords, both decorative and battle-worn, as well as clothes, jewelry, tools, and art. The placement of the cargo also carried significant meaning and underscored the detailed planning and ceremonial customs. Contrary to the popular myth, the ritual didn't always end with the vessel being set on fire. Old Uppsala In the fall of 2008, archaeologists detected two Viking boat burials near the town of Uppsala in Sweden. The discovery occurred by accident during an inspection by Archaeologerna, an agency of Sweden's National Historic Museums, during a planned renovation of a church about 50 miles north of Stockholm. The team expected only a routine dig, but were stunned to unearth the ships, including one found entirely intact. From an archaeological standpoint, finding a site not previously looted or ravaged by time and the elements is like finding an action comic makes number one hidden in your attic and winning the lottery on the same day. The team unearthed the remains of a man located in the stern of the boat, along with the bones of a horse and a dog in the bow. They also stumbled upon a cache of weapons, including a sword, spear, and shield, and an ornate comb in a well-preserved grave. Unfortunately, they found the second boat badly damaged, most likely resulting from construction on the site in the 16th century. To date, only around 10 boat burial sites of this kind are known to exist in Sweden, mainly in the provinces of Uppland and Vastmanland. Anton Zeller of Arcula Germa stated, It is extremely exciting for us since boat burials are so rarely excavated. We can now use modern science and methods that will generate new results, hypotheses, and answers. Riding High The Viking Ship Museum in Oslo, Norway is a popular tourist attraction where crowds flock annually to see one of the most well-preserved and spectacular artifacts, the Osberg. Built in 1820 AD in southwestern Norway, the 70-foot-long boat features exceptionally decorative features and the grave of two significant women of either royal or religious status between the ages of 50 and 80. They also received an impressive cache of burial booty, including a pouch of cannabis. The richly carved oak ship had 50 oars on each side and a pine mast over 30 feet high, allowing for the versatility of being rowed or sailed. But a voyage to a distant world warrants all the attention of this craft. In addition to the stash of cannabis, the the party boat contained a feather mattress, an assortment of ornate beds, 15 horses, 6 dogs, and 3 sleighs. Clearly, these ladies knew how to travel in style. Interestingly, the boat had been looted by ancient grave robbers who made away with most of the precious metals on board, but not the weed. That prize wouldn't be found until 2007. Recent studies indicate that farmers in Norway cultivated hemp as early as 650 AD. None of the materials found on the Osberg, however, were made from the plant, suggesting a recreational use of the cannabis and its seeds. Additionally, the more elderly of the two women may have been a priestess, a high position in Viking society and one known to conduct ritualistic ceremonies using psychoactive substances. Extended Stay Roughly 500 years before Christopher Columbus found himself hopelessly lost in the Caribbean, seafarers from Scandinavia became the first Europeans to set foot in North America. Archaeologists initially discovered the site at Lancel Meadow on the northern tip of Newfoundland in the 1960s, uncovering evidence of what appeared to be a short-lived settlement. A new study, however, suggests that the Vikings, led by the famous explorer Leif Erikson, 
may have taken a much later check out in their timber and sod ocean view rooms. While conducting experiments in the area, Canadian researchers found sediment cores of compacted organic material similar to Viking camps in Greenland and Iceland. Nothing about the trampled debris, a mix of mostly plants, insects, mud, and charcoal appeared unusual. But after applying advanced radiocarbon dating methods, the samples indicated a Norse presence in the area as late as the early 1200s. The revelation, if accurate, is significant because it dispels the notion of a failed Viking colony there. Additionally, it now seems possible that European descendants might have settled other areas of North America. Until now, most historians believed that Ericsson and his crew either abandoned the location or were chased away by the indigenous Native Americans. According to the sagas, Ericsson called the faraway land Vinland, meaning land of grapes in Old Norse, an odd name given that grapes don't grow in Newfoundland. But to be fair, Columbus is guilty of a far worse blunder when he labeled the natives he later encountered as Indians because he thought they had landed in India. Gender Bender. Near the town of Birka in Sweden, archaeologists unearthed a prominent burial site situated next to an ancient garrison. The late 19th century dig would be hailed as the world's ultimate warrior Viking grave and yield a spectacular bounty of grave goods. The bonanza included weaponry and two horses, all of which indicated a tribute to an essential and well seasoned military leader. A re examination of bone samples in 2017 would reveal an even more stunning revelation the fallen soldier was a woman. The groundbreaking results published in the American American Journal of Physical Anthropology featured extensive osteological and DNA testing to prove the academic community had been wrong for over a hundred years. Charlotte Hedenstiena Jonsson, a professor of archaeology at Uppsala University, explains why the contents of the grave were always presumed to be the remains of a high-ranking male officer. Aside from the complete warrior equipment buried along with her, a sword, an axe, a spear, armor-piercing arrows, a battle knife, shields, and two horses, she had a board game in her lap, or more of a war plan game used to try out battle tactics and strategies, which indicates she was a powerful military leader. She most likely planned, led, and taken part in battles. Another intriguing layer to the story involves not only the impressive cache of arms, but the person's unusual uniform. Although graves of Nordic women found with weapons isn't uncommon, the woman found in Birka wasn't wearing typically female clothing or jewelry. Earlier this year, the same research team issued a follow-up report that suggests that the warrior could have been transgender. It read, In this grave there is nothing that we archaeologically would interpret as female. It's not a typically male costume either, probably because it's very high status, but there is nothing indicating a woman. There are no typical finds that we link to women. This revelation is unlikely to alter historians' view of Viking society as being anything other than patriarchal. However, future findings must now address the complexity of gender in this period and approach binary assumptions with caution. Saddle Bay The Scottish Highlands is world-renowned for its breathtaking landscapes marked by majestic mountains, lustrous locks, and a mysterious monster named Nessie. The area now features another compelling reason to visit following the discovery of the first undisturbed Viking boat burial on the UK mainland. On the remote Arden Merkin Peninsula, a team of archaeologists found the remains of a ship from the late 9th or early 10th century. The burial mound, overlooking Saddle Bay on Scotland's west coast, held the remains of an esteemed warrior replete with a spear, shield, sword, and axe. Non-military goods included a whetstone, a sharpening stone, a drinking horn, a pan, flints for making fire, and a bronze ring pin from Ireland. Incredibly, for over a thousand years, this gravesite remained untouched. After six years of work that involved cataloging hundreds of items, the Arden Merck and Transitions Project released an in-depth report published in the Journal of Antiquity in 2017. The study highlights the relationship between Scotland and the Viking occupation in the area, as well as symbolic associations close to a Neolithic burial can, the stones of which may have been repurposed into the grave. Family Road Trip For many generations, mum, dad, and the kids would pile into the family vehicle for a road trip and an endless refrain of are we there yet. It turns out the Vikings, they were no different during long voyages to new lands. The northern seafarers had a well-earned reputation for being ruthless marauders with a penchant for destroying churches and monasteries. After all, the Old Norse word Viking refers to a freebooter who is involved in raiding. But ancient Scandinavians, like most people, also sought to provide a better life for their families. Plunder aside, they took to the open seas in search of new trading routes and territories with suitable farming. On paper, northern latitudes such as the Shetland and Orkney Islands 
Islands may not seem like the most inviting climates to relocate to. However, they make the frozen tundra of Scandinavia look like Miami Beach in July. In a recently published paper on migrations, a team of researchers used mitochondrial DNA evidence to show that Norse women often joined their men on these journeys. According to co-author and University of Oslo professor Erika Hagelberg, this finding overrules the idea that it just involved raping and pillaging by males going out on a rampage. Luck of the Nordish? The first recorded Viking raid on Irish soil occurred around 795 AD with the ransacking of a church. Thus began the official Norse influence on the Emerald Isle, which among other things led to establishing a permanent settlement at the mouth of the River Liffey that came to be known as Dublin. But several new studies suggest that the invaders may have arrived sooner than previously documented, creating a far more significant impact on Irish heritage. Viking rule, although never a dominion in Ireland, effectively ended in 1014 AD following their defeat at the Battle of Clontarf by Irish high king Brian Boru. Scientific advancements in archaeology continued to shine a megawatt spotlight on ancient burial grounds, villages, and encampments. Elsewhere, more subtle Nordic traces are popping up in the genetics of the modern-day Irish people, as well as the world's estimated 80 million people who claim Irish ancestry. A 2017 study conducted by the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin reveals a considerable underestimation of the Vikings' genetic contribution to Irish DNA, especially bloodlines originating from the north and western coasts of Norway. Researchers at Trinity College Dublin confirmed the results in a similar 2018 report. They also found 23 new genetic clusters in Ireland, not earlier identified, pointing to the likelihood of a much deeper Viking gene pool. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. When you're subscribing, ring that bell so you find out when that video goes out. And as always, thank you for watching.